Good afternoon, everybody. It's been a minute that I've been done a sports interview here on the Aluminum Journal. And today we have Mr. Kurt Bischoff, who is a baseball writer, contributor for Fansighted, a company that I work for, and SB Nation. So, Kurt, thank you for joining me. How are you, man? I'm doing great. How are you? Thanks for having me. Doing great, man. I can't complain. Um, so far, you know, your story has been interesting. So the first thing I want to ask you, when did you know that you had the skill set to write for sports or that you wanted to work in sports? Um, you know, it's funny. I think when I was back when I was a little kid, I I, I always kind of wanted to be a sports broadcaster, but then I kind of changed lanes. Um, <clears throat> I've always been pretty good at writing. <clears throat> um my college degree was actually in communications and more like media. So, um, but I did kind of do writing on the side. I had, that we had a school newspaper that I wrote baseball articles for. I covered a lot of sports there. And towards the end of my time in college, I had a professor say, Hey, I know someone here from the athletic and she put me in touch with him. And that's kind of how I started making contacts. And that's kind of when I realized that this is my passion and that this is what I wanted to do. I definitely understand in the sense that, you know, when you have a school newspaper, you got to take advantage of those. If you're a writer and you want to start somewhere, always take advantage of school magazine. And I did that um, years ago when I was in college and um, it was a fun and entertaining experience. So um, broadcasting, who are some of your, who are some of the broadcasters you looked up to or that they inspire you to want to get in that field at first? Um, well, it's funny. I, um, uh, I obviously was, this is, I was a big video gamer, sports video games when I was young. Um, and the baseball games always had John Miller and Joe Morgan, the guys who used to do Sunday night baseball. So they were obviously kind of part of it. Um, you know, um, being from St. Louis, obviously Jack Buck is, is, is someone that I looked up to and Mike Shannon, of course, as a big Cardinals fan. So, <clears throat> those are kind of the guys that I I really looked up to growing up. And since you're a, a passionate Cardinal fan, um, if you want, you can name a few. You can name like three or five um, Cardinal players that you've watched or that you're a fan of that you would like to sit down and have a conversation with. Feel free and um, drop some names. Oh, yeah, I've... I've got plenty. Um, I'll I'll give you I'll give you five here. Obviously, you know, Albert Pujols is one just because, you know, he just he took the league by storm and he just he he was something else. Um, after a while, my favorite was kind of Adam Wainwright, you know, seeing what he did for the championship runs um, and just what he did throughout his career. Definitely. And he seems like a great guy, too. So I'm definitely interested in him. Um 2011, David Fries, I always was interested in his story, being a local kid and just kind of bursting onto the scene and getting to lead his hometown team to a championship. Um, uh, Matt Holiday was one of my favorites. Um, he's in the Cardinals Hall of Fame now, um, but he's he's still loved here. Um, and then um, Scott Rowland recently just got into the Hall of Fame. He was when I was a little kid, he was probably my my favorite player. So um, he was kind of the one I looked up to. Yeah, for a moment, um, I was going to ask you, like, what about Scott Rowland? Because he was mm -hmm. uh, he, I love seeing players that they do a great job of both ends of the field, offensively and defensively. But his bigger asset was more defensively. And that's something that I've been a fan of, of his game since he was with Philadelphia. But it's in right. St. Louis where he, he made most of his mark and more of his success came from St. Louis. So um, shout out to Scott Rowland, Hall of Famer, well deserved. And um, but yeah, he was phenomenal. Um, what was the last? Well, yeah, what was the last time you've been to Bush Stadium? Uh, about a month ago. Um, Brewers were in town, so it was a nice NL Central matchup so i went for went for that it was a it was a fun time can you recall um the best game that you've seen at bush stadium Ooh, that's uh 
I, I've seen a lot of them. So that's it might take a second. Um, but one that really sticks out is probably the first one I ever saw at New Bush Stadium. It was an Easter Sunday game. I think 2006 was the first year it was open and they were playing the Reds and it was just a back and forth game. Um, Pujols hit three home runs. Roland, I think, hit a couple. Um, but it was just so back and forth. And by the end, um, they were down to their last strike. And that's when Pujols hit his third home run and everyone just went crazy. It was just such a it was just it was just such a fun atmosphere to be a part of and just for my first time at the new ballpark i thought it was really special nice thanks st louis is actually one of the cities that was on my bucket list to go um mostly because I, i'm a big baseball fan i want to catch a game over there on my bush stadium so the question that i have for you is a two question number one are the tickets are they cheap? Are they expensive? Or, and number two, when is the best time to go to catch a game at Bush Stadium? Um, best time to catch a game. Viewers will be listening to this, so um, I had to ask it because viewers will be listening to this for those who are catching a baseball fans like us. Uh, yeah. Um, best time to catch a game, I would say, is probably earlier in the year because um, summertime here in St. Louis is not. It's not exactly pleasant temperature wise. Um, you don't really want to be sitting out in the heat, but you know, spring's always a nice time to go. Um, as of right now, the tickets are kind of cheap because they're they're not really good right now. They're I think five games under five hundred, and they're coming off a a ninety loss season, so ticket sales have kind of been down. Um, but as of right now, they're kind of cheap. But when they're when they're good, which um, is more common in my lifetime, they're, they're uh, they're decent size. They're not super, you know, you know, break the bank with them, but um, they, uh, they, they are in high demand when they're, when they're good. They didn't call you by surprise the way they performed last season, especially the way how good they performed in 2022, even though it was a disappointing end that they lost to the Phillies in the wild card round, but it was a successful season in terms of making it to the postseason. Um, you had Arenado, Goldschmidt, um, who I'm a fan of, and you had all these pieces. Um, were you surprised by how they performed last year? Um, I I didn't think it was going to be a World Series contender because I thought they could have done more pitching wise. But I had no expectation that it was going to be as bad as it was um, losing ninety games. So that that did take me by surprise for sure. And what are your thoughts about them this year so far? Well, um. I think they're they're I think they're definitely better than last year. The pitching is at least good. Um, but at the same time, last year kind of set a low bar. So, you know, kind of anything is is better than that. Um, but the offense I thought was gonna be a lot better, and that's kind of why they're that's kind of the main reason why they're struggling right now is that they're not really they're just not really hitting. So that's kind of what's that's kind of what's got them at the bottom of the central again, and that's what's kind of putting them in the conversation with some of the some of the teams that, you know, you don't really expect to contend. So tell me about SB Nation. You're a contributor writer there, and I believe that you write about Cardinals there. I know for fast that you do. So how did that come about, and how are you enjoying it so far? I love it. It's it's a lot of fun. You know, it's just – it's another place where I can just kind of share my thoughts about, you know, the team I love, um, the history, and all the stuff like that. Um, it kind of came about, I was, um, I was doing another, I was doing another job, but I was, this was something I was very interested in just kind of the chance to talk about my favorite team with the, the St. Louis Cardinals fan community and just getting the chance to do that was a lot of fun. And what I, what I do there is, um, I do a weekly blog post and I do at least one game recap per week. Nice. So what's the dream job for for you? Um, because you're working on Fat Inside and SB Nation and those are good um companies, you know, to kind of get your feet wet in the writing business of sports. So do you have a company in mind that you want to work for, or do you have something that maybe you don't want to share or you know? Yeah, um, I've actually kind of come to the realization, you know, Fansite, it does actually have full-time gigs that um, I, I don't know if there are any right now, but 
obviously some have opened up in the past and um i think that is that's kind of where i see myself because i i really feel like fanside is a great place to to grow it's 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 one of those companies where you know you can just get your feet wet like you said um but after a while once you really hone your craft you can really grow and become um one of one of the top you can become one of the top writers there um after a while so that's kind of where i see myself going forward um obviously open to anything but um that's kind of where i see myself right now that's not a bad option um i've been with fanside since december 2020 2021 i believe and i first started writing for the blue jays and i'm not a fan of blue jays i respect them i've always liked them but in terms of being a passionate fan, never been of that. So when I got into fan side, I didn't, I never really knew what exactly I was getting myself into. But when I started learning about, you know, what is fan side is about, it's really about writing about your favorite team. So I first started with the Blue Jays, which was a great experience. And then from there, I went to write for Saturday Blitz, which is a new kind of platform. And that mostly has to do with writing for any game on college football. So that's where I'm at right now. Um, but I am looking forward to joining other areas like maybe the Yankees or the Rangers, the hockey team, et cetera. So we'll see. But fan side, yeah, I've been enjoying it so far. It's been a thrill. The people that I've met, the people that I've connected, and I just met another one, which is you, um, another member of fan side. So it's always important, you know, to, you know, slowly, you know, build blocks, you know, work your way up in this business. So I definitely hear you on that. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think, like I said, it's a great place to like, like you said, there are great people here that, that want to see you succeed. They, they want to help you get wherever you need to go. And, and like, I, like I said, there, there really is opportunities. There are opportunities to grow and fan sided. That's just a great, great place to kind of get started and hone your craft. So before I let you go, I got to ask you this. Um, you're a Star Wars fan. I noticed that. Um, you're a Star <laughs> Wars fan. So um, this is no right or wrong answer. You know, um, it's just your, I want to get your opinion. What's your, what, what's your favorite Star Wars movie? Which one you think is the best? Um, my favorite has to be Revenge of the Sith because it's just kind of the most crucial of the of the saga because like if certain things in that movie don't go right, you know, the galaxy's pretty much, you know, screwed. Um I think the best on paper is probably Empire Strikes Back, but my favorite has always been Revenge of the Sith cuz I born in 98, I grew up with the prequels and those were those movies were incredibly popular when I was a kid in elementary school and um you know, I just, I was, I've discovered I was passionate about those movies and um, that Obi-Wan Anakin duel is just, you, you can't beat it. All right. All right. So Kurt, thank you so much for taking the time to do this interview with me. Best of luck on everything that you're doing. And I'm looking forward to hopefully reading some of your articles. So I'll be definitely checking you out, man. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. I enjoyed talking to you and um, hope to speak with you soon.